We can create navigation bars using Bootstrap, as seen in this example. This navbar extends from one end of the browser's content area to the other on large screens. When viewed on smaller screens, the navigation bar stacks the links one on top of the other. So this navigation bar is fully responsive. This navigation bar was developed by creating a nav element and assigning the class navbar and navbar default. The navbar default class allows us to style the bar. We'll try different styles later in this lesson. Next, we create a container that will contain the navbar and all its elements. After our container div, we create another div with the class navbar header. Inside this div, we have our header, my website, inside an A element with the class navbar brand. We also have attached a link using the href attribute, and we've assigned an empty link dis represented by the, the pound sign here. We define our navbar links using an unordered list with the class set to nav and navbar dash nav. The UL element contains four list items in this case, one for each link seen on the bar. As you can see, we've assigned a class to the first list item and set it to active. That's what creates the highlight effect on link one. After the nav tags, we've created a container that contains our page content. We're currently using a fixed width for both the nav bar container and the content container. And that's represented by the div class equals cont container attribute here and also over here. We can change both to a fluid container by changing the container class to container fluid on both elements. So now we can see that the content and the navbar stretch or span across the entire browser's content area. But we'll go back to the fixed width container. We can also change the style of the navbar by changing the navbar default class to navbar inverse. And you can see that this inverts the colors of the navbar. We've also added right aligned navbar items, and this was done by creating a UL element. Okay. You can see that this UL code block represents link 1 to link 4. Shortly after that, we have another UL element. And this UL element has the class nav, navbar, and navbar write. The navbar write class is what write aligns these two items here. And these two items are represented by these list by these two list elements. Each list element has a link attribute with an href tag. Uh, we've set it to an empty link for now. We've also included a span tag and we've set the class to glyphicon, glyphicon star empty. That's what gives us the star icon as you learned in er earlier lessons. And for the second list item, we've set it to Glyphicon Search. And that's why we have the magnifying glass next to our link two. And our labels are right here. If we wanted to change them, we could just update the text here. We can give our nav bar a fixed position, uh, both top or bottom, so it doesn't scroll with the rest of the content on the page. And to do that, it's fairly simple. We just add the class nav bar fixed top or navbar fixed bottom to the nav element right here. 
So if we go ahead and set it to navbar fixed bottom and save and refresh, you can see that it is now at the bottom of the page. And that's fixed, so it, it will not scroll with the rest of the content on the page. And if you wanted to have that at the top, just replace the word bottom with top. And now it will remain fixed at the top. It will not scroll with the rest of the content. We can add a drop down menu to any of our nav bar buttons by adding the drop down menu code block where we want the menu to appear. So I'll go ahead and I'll paste in the code block. By now we should be familiar with creating drop down menus. It's the same idea. Uh, we've worked with it in the past. So I'll create the drop down menu before our link one button and just adjust the formatting and I'll save the file. So there's our menu button now with our drop down menu. 